Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Axis and Allies, a new digital version uh, being developed by Beamdog and currently in early access on Steam. In our first episode, it was our first look at the game, and we played through the first turn of the game, as well as the uh, second turn for the Russians. And we are now into round number two. It is the purchasing phase for the Germans. We have 45 IPCs, or industrial points, uh, to spend. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to focus very heavily on infantry and artillery. I know tanks are kind of the big sexy thing to, to kind of go with. But honestly, um, infantry and artillery are kind of the keys uh, to defending in this game. And I think we're going to have to do a fair bit of that. Uh, against the uh, enemy enemy forces that we're going to be facing here in the not too distant future infantry defends at level two and they attack at level two with artillery support and so that's why we're buying seven infantry and six artillery here uh, for this phase um, that's a lot uh, meanwhile we're going to move through to the next phase of the german uh, turn and i think what we're going to do here is it looks like we've got three infantry units in Karelia. um I'm kind of unsure if we want to advance them further into northern Russia toward Archangel uh, or if we want to maybe even advance them southward uh, toward western Russia with a larger offensive uh, there. That is an option. Another option is to turn against the Caucasus uh, and launch our own version of Stalingrad. Now, the uh, Soviets have six units of artillery and infantry there, so that's six at two. They've got one British infantry, two fighter units, and an anti-aircraft gun there. Um, the most that we could bring to bear against them there would be five armored units, uh, which would attack at level three. And then we could bring down up to four air units, but that would leave Belarusia uh, extremely exposed to a Soviet counteroffensive. Uh, still, we could pour a fair amount of infantry. Uh, we could pour, pour all of our new units into Poland, uh, which would help us offset uh, that uh, risk. So I think what we're at, we are going to do is we are going to go the historical route, and we are going to go ahead and go after the Caucasus. We are going to launch our own version of the Battle of Stalingrad here. It's going to be a near-run thing because the enemy has a large force uh, already there, and we do don't really plan to attack with too much. Um, let's see here. I think Belarus will probably fall. These air units can attack from two away. So that's what we're going to do. Also, air units on the offensive are better than air units on the defensive. And so as a result, uh, I'm going to really focus uh, the majority of my strength down here. Um, we'll keep the f We'll do one infantry unit just so we've got one cannon fodder unit. And then, let's see, so we've got five armored units, four fighters, one bomber, one infantry. That's a total of 11 units. They have a total of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have a slight advantage in terms of firepower and a slight advantage in terms of manpower. Meanwhile, we've got three units in Leningrad currently. The Soviets can bring up to three armored units forward um, toward, uh, or, sorry, Leningrad or toward Karelia. Um... We can move some reinforcements into Finland. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move... Well, I'm, I can't do that quite yet because we're not in the uh, operational move phase yet. Um, let's see here. Anything else? Can we attack with anything else for the Germans? Um, we, I think we attacked Egypt last turn. But let's go ahead and attack it again this turn heavily. It is important for the British, so we'll go ahead and attack there. We'll leave these infantry units in Morocco and Algeria on the defensive to deal with the um, Americans. Meanwhile, we've got three submarines here. Oh. All right, so it's out of range. So we'll move these guys here to the uh, British Isles. Move three submarines here to try and destroy what's left of the Royal Navy. So three submarines are going to move off the coast of England. Is that all the rest of the Navy that we have in this region? It looks like it. These ships can't sail anywhere. At least not anywhere that they can attack. So we'll leave them there. And I think that's probably all of the German units that can attack. These guys can't quite make it there. 
We move this armored unit from Germany to Belarusia on the defensive. Might even make sense just to leave Belarusia open to the enemy and move all of our troops into Poland. Invite them in for an attack and then immediately counterattack. We'll see, because I'm not, I'm not sure how they're going to respond to the attack on the Caucasus if it succeeds. So let's go ahead and do that. I guess we'll end this phase and we'll move right into the uh, combat phase. So this is going to be actual combat. Let's go ahead and uh, jump in here. Let's take a look at the naval combat off the coast of England first. We'll see how this plays out. So they've got one cruiser, one destroyer, one transport. That's one, two, one, three. We've got three twos. It's a pretty even uh, battle, I think. Ooh, nice. We got two hits on the enemy in our first roll. So that should actually sink their fleet, and they shouldn't have enough die rolls to knock us out. So they're going to counterattack with their destroyer, uh, which fails to do any damage. They'll counterattack with their cruiser, uh, which also fails to do any damage. And we just wiped out this British fleet off the British Isles without loss. So that's a very good result for us. A decisive victory there in C-Zone 8. 27 British IPCs destroyed without loss for the Germans. Uh, meanwhile, the next battle is going to be in the Caucasus. This is our only other attack in this particular turn. And we'll see this is general combat. Our army is attacking in the Caucasus. They do have air defense uh, artillery, which gets to roll at a level 1 against our anti-aircraft first uh, as a pre-roll. And it looks like they get one roll per aircraft or something like that. Um, I think... Can our bomber take two hits, like the battleships? I think so. No, it can't. I don't know why I did that. I just gave up on my best air unit. Shit. Well, I guess I don't know how the rules work. Alright, so our infantry attacks first. Does nothing. Now we've got nine threes or better. So there's one, two, three hits right away. Oh, wait. Actually, more than three. So you can see here, we just knocked out all of their ground units and one of their air units. They've got an anti-aircraft non-combatant left, and they've got one fighter unit left. So now they get to roll a bunch of twos. Whoa! They got four hits on that roll. Uh, so we'll take one on the uh, infantry, one on one of the fighters, and then maybe two tanks. I think. it's kind of how we'll break it out. So we did a lot of damage to them, but they did quite a lot of damage to us as well. Defender gets to roll their fours are better. They get one more hit here. We'll take that against our fighter, mainly because aircraft can't take ground. This is going to be a pretty difficult battle. They've only got one more unit left, so we're going to press the attack. We just need one hit. We got it. And spades. So their units are destroyed. They'll get one counterattack roll. Please miss. Nope. It hit. Lovely. Alright, well we'll take one hit on the uh, armor. So two armor and two fighters survive. Bit of a Pyrrhic victory there. It is a victory nonetheless. We do take the Caucasus, but you can see there we lost 53 IPCs worth of units. The enemy lost 49, so that battle definitely favored them. Nonetheless, they lose four IPCs worth of income with the loss of the Caucasus. And uh, they're probably... I wonder if they're going to counterattack down here or where they're going to counterattack. Because there's a very vulnerable front line all across Russia for us. Uh, fortunately for us, the Soviets don't have a ton of offensive troops in the way. They have a lot of infantry that they raise. They raise nine infantry, but they only have two artillery units total. Uh, which means that their infantry is going to be very poor on the, uh, on the offensive. I don't think there's... Oh, we still have to fight the battle in Egypt, so we'll do that. Germany is attacking in Egypt. We'll see how this plays out. This is a pretty even fight. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not. They've got one defender at two. We've got two attackers at two and one at three. So we'll roll here, and just like that, we knock them out right away. We'll see if they're... God damn it, they roll a lot of fucking twos. So we'll take the hit on the artillery. The infantry can still defend the base at a two. So we'll do that. And that's a victory for us. Um, but we lost slightly more economic value there than 
than we gained. So at the end of the day, Germany lost 57 IPCs worth of units. The British lost 43. The Soviets lost 36. Some of those British units were in Russia. So that's a total of 79 Allied IPCs to 57. Overall, a good result for the Germans. They took Egypt. They took the Caucasus. They took the region off the coast of England, Sea Zone 8. Um, but not exactly uh, quite the result we were hoping for. Um, that all being said. Um, okay, so the way is open, I would say, in um, the Middle East. We're going to go ahead and move... Can't, what, what? I'm going to move this battleship. I guess I can't move it out of the med. So we'll move it over here close to Gibraltar. We'll see if they bomb it. They might. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and take this armor here, which is in Germany. We're going to go ahead and move it to Belarusia on the defensive. We're going to go ahead and move three German infantry units into Poland. Actually, let's not do that. Close. We're going to leave Belarusia undefended for the time being. And we're going to move this armor unit to Ukraine, because I think we can hold the Ukraine if he does try and attack from Western Russia there. You know, all this armor is going to move to Poland. This armor in France is also going to move to Poland. And then this German infantry will move to Poland as well. We'll move... I don't think they can land in in the in, uh, northern France yet. Not with our submarines controlling the sea zone there. So I think we're relatively safe to move those troops in that direction. We'll move the troops in Finland to Karelia. So we have uh, an extra infantry unit there. We'll move two of the infantry units currently in uh, Karelia down to Belarusia. So they'll have at least something standing in their way. Um, low cost defend defenders. So we'll leave two defenders in Karelia, two defenders in Belarusia. Um, an armor and three infantry in Ukraine, two armor. We will probably actually want to land these fighter aircraft somewhere. So let's not risk our fighters. Let's pull these guys out of the Caucasus. We already got our Air Force pretty well crippled. We'll land them in Poland where we're going to bring in the bulk of our reserve reinforcements. We're also going to move this artillery unit forward from Bulgaria into the Ukraine so it can help on the defensive from any counterattack there. Um, so that's going to do it for the German turn. Move forward here. So go to the next phase, the mobilization phase. We need to go ahead and deploy our troops. So we've got seven infantry, six artillery, and they are all going to go to Poland. Wait, I can only deploy one to Poland? Really? All right, I guess we can put one in Karelia. Two, we can put two in Karelia. Hmm. So let's actually avoid that. I would rather put artillery in Poland because we've already got some infantry there. Meanwhile, I guess we'll put one infantry in France, one in Italy, just to be safe. Can't deploy any troops to North Africa. The rest pretty much just has to go to Germany. So it's going to take an extra turn to get any of these troops over there. But in any event, Poland is still strong. It's going to have three infantry, two artillery, three or two armor, two fighters. So it should be able to counterattack at Belarusia if it falls. Leningrad, meanwhile, is going to have four infantry. Should be good for any counterattack that feasibly could come this turn, unless he moves all of his armor out of Western Russia. But that would be pretty reckless. So we'll see how that works out. We'll end that phase. And now we're going to go into the British phase. So Germany gains two territories. It's up to 18. Six new national production uh, and 47 IPCs. Meanwhile, the British are moving fighters to where? What just happened? This is my problem with this game is it doesn't tell me what the hell happened. I think there was a battle in France. I think the French sent their air force there and it failed to, or sorry, the, the British sent their air force there and it failed to do anything, but I didn't even get a war report. I didn't get a, I didn't get a summary or anything. What the hell? Ugh. All I can tell is that it looks like we lost some troops there and they lost two fighters. So I'm assuming that means that, uh, that there was a battle fought there. All right, so... Is that the British fleet, or is that... No. 
All right, so Japan has 34 IPCs. Um, in terms of what we want to buy, I kind of feel like going mostly naval. We probably do need some land forces to help in China. So we can do two and two. That gives us 20. Then we can go ahead and go with um, a cruiser and a destroyer in the Navy, and that should spend all of our money. So we'll end that phase. Two infantry, two artillery, one destroyer, one cruiser. Now we're going to move into our Japan combat move phase. Um, why are there British cruisers in Manila? How the hell did they get down there? Also, we got two new carriers, but I don't think we have fighters for them. All right, let's move... Remove our battleships and carriers off the Hawaiian Islands. Move our fighters over here to destroyers here. That should be sufficient, I think, to crush them off the Hawaiian Islands. And then I'm going to move my other remaining forces to deal with the British off of the Philippines. Because I also think that we want to deal with those forces there. Meanwhile, we're going to move this battleship back here as well to deal with that. Move a carrier back that way too. Okay. Um, so we should be able to destroy the British off Manila. I'm also hopeful we can destroy the Americans off the Hawaiian Islands. Do a bit of damage to them there. We'll leave the carriers off the coast of Japan primarily because um, I think it's safer and I don't have actual air groups for them at the moment. I don't have anything to actually like move forward with. Meanwhile, China, Sichuan is unoccupied, so we're going to move there. We're also going to move an infantry unit here into Anhui. It looks like the Americans and the British are moving their troops into Russia abandoning China which is pretty interesting they've got a lot of Russian forces near Manchuria actually which makes me hesitant to attack from there I guess so we'll go with those attacks then we're going to move the artillery into Burma to help against a British offensive there. They've got three air units in India. They could really do some damage there. Though, interestingly enough, they didn't last turn. In any event, we should be able to take these two Chinese provinces and almost get close to knocking China out of the war as a geographic unit. Um, let's zoom out here. I think that's about it. We've got the one transport, but we need to load it first. So it's just those combat moves. Okay, so Szechuan falls without a fight because there's no one there. And then Anwai is going to have a battle. Alright, general combat. Four Japanese infantry against one American infantry and one American fighter. Alright, nice. We got one hit there, so that should knock one of their guys out. We'll see what they roll with in defense. But first misses. You know, the fact that it tells you immediately if there's hits kind of takes away from a little bit of the suspense, right? Like it tells me one hit remaining, even though I haven't even seen the dice yet. So that seems like something that I would rather they don't do. In any event, we'll go ahead and press the attack here. So we lost one infantry. It's now an inf three infantry versus a fighter. Oh shit. And he's gonna hit us again. So now it's gonna be two versus one. We'll see if they can uh, eliminate our offensive before we actually can finish them off. Yes, we got them. All right, so we won the battle. Just a question of whether one infantry survives or two. Um, I'm assuming it missed. Yep, it missed. Okay, so two infantry survive the battle, and Japan takes the base at Anwai. 13 American IPC losses versus six Japanese. A victory there as Japan continues to press inward toward, I don't know, Russia? 
All right, so now we are in... Well, this is still the combat phase, so now we have all the naval battles to fight. So we'll go ahead and fight the battle near Manila. This should be a victory for us, I'm hoping. With a dice game like this, it's all about... I mean, real warfare also has a fair bit of this. But it's all about concentration of forces, really. So the carrier attacks with its puny little pop guns. We'll move on to the destroyers. Still nothing. We've got the cruiser and the fighter. Jesus, bad luck. Come on, battleship, do something. There we go. All right, so we got one hit on the only combatant for the enemy. The uh, transport dies, I think, as soon as this is over. So they roll their defense, and they miss, so we lost nothing, and they lost a transport and a cruiser. That is a successful battle. Even though the dice rolls weren't really favoring us there, 19 enemy IPCs lost, none on the Japanese side. The British are really getting hit hard this turn, by the way. It seems like the majority of the units getting destroyed... Even in Russia, they lost a fair number of units, and in Egypt, and off the British coast, and now Manila, and the two fighters they attacked without England. All right, so now the major naval battle off the Hawaiian Islands is going to occur. Oh, every time you got to see that Type 7 U-boat. All right, Sea Zone 53. This is one American transport, which is or British transport, which is a non-combatant. You've got one American sub, and you've got an American carrier and an American destroyer. Versus a Japanese battleship, a Japanese bomber, two Japanese fighters, a destroyer, and a carrier. So first dice roll is the carrier for the Japanese. It does nothing. Then we get to go with our destroyers. Another miss. Now we've got two fighters. And we get one hit. So we'll, talk, we'll knock out the submarine there. Then we've got two level fours. And we get two hits. Nice. Okay, so the allied fleet will be destroyed. It's just a matter of how much they can counter against us. So their sub will roll, and it looks like it misses. It does. That was close, but it missed. And now their other ships will roll, and they all miss as well. So the enemy loses a carrier, a destroyer, a submarine, and a transport, all without Japanese losses. So another successful Japanese naval battle. 35 IPCs lost on the American side. And the sea zone near Hawaii is cleared of enemy units. This turn was very good for the Axis. The Japanese turn was very good for the Axis. The British lost 26 industrial uh, points uh, certificates. The Americans lost 41, and the Japanese merely lost 6, 2 infantry units. So that is a grand total of 67 Allied IPCs versus 6 Japanese. Nice. All right, so now it's on to non-combatant moves um, in terms of, you know, allocating troops and moving things around. I think what we'll do here is we've got a transport here. Uh, I'm going to move the... Uh, Move this tank onto this transport. Then this transport is going to move down to Burma. Then we're going to move our, our tank ashore here to get some armor here. Meanwhile, we're going to move these two artillery units into Burma as well. So we can put a defensive together against the British in India. We're going to move three fighters uh, to Burma as well. I'm going to largely ignore the, the, the Russians on the northern front for one critical reason. So this should, I think, make me safe from attack from the British in India. Um, but I'm going to ignore the Russians here because they've got five infantry, but there's no support there. So it would be five ones versus three twos. The American uh, craft could make things difficult, uh, but we are going to hopefully uh, be able to transport some uh, additional reinforcements south. I need to buy another transport. That's what I'm missing out on. All right, this bomber needs to fly back to a base. We'll fly it back to Wake Island. Can these guys move at all? Doesn't look like it. These guy, these fighters, can they land on this carrier? I guess they can probably stay here, right? They're not blinking. It doesn't look like they need to land because we've got a carrier in the hex. Okay, what I really should do is Japan is buy an industrial production facility on the Asian mainland. That's really what I need. But that's probably going to do it for our movement. We'll see if we can finish off China or if the Allies stop moving their troops away from China. All right, so that'll end the phase. Next phase is the American turn. Or, sorry, mobilization. So we need to place these new Japanese units. All of them have to be placed in Tokyo. It's the only place you can build is Japan to start. So we'll put our four ground units here. And then we've got our two new naval units here off the coast of Japan as well. And that'll end the turn. And now we're going to move into the American phase and we're going to have no idea what's going on. 
Japan got two more territories, two new pro national production, uh, and 34 more IPCs. Okay, so we're going to move into the American phase. I'd like to follow what the Americans are doing. The Americans land in Morocco? Shit. They also counterattack at Szechuan. So now the Americans are on the North African coast, um, which is going to be a challenge. They're moving a lot of non-combatant forces around as well. Americans are going to build a bunch more units because they get a lot of money. Two naval units in the Atlantic. That's interesting. Um, so yeah, they took Morocco. Meanwhile, the USSR is going to counterattack in the Caucasus. Three armored units there. They do succeed. They lose one casualty. And they move some non-combatant stuff around. So by the looks of it, that's the only USSR move. Um, okay, so they, they took the Caucasus and destroyed our units there. They didn't attack in China. The Americans did counterattack in China. I thought we had two infantry units there. I guess we probably lost them. They have one unit there in Sichuan. Um, Alright, the Americans are moving naval assets into Sea Zone 58. So that's going to be a battleship and a destroyer. Those are things we can destroy. We can also move our naval units off the coast of the U.S. in San Francisco. Wow, this is interesting. So I think that we're going to have a destroyer and a transport in range here, a cruiser in range here, a battleship and a destroyer in range here, and we will have assets that I think should allow us to win every one of those battles. So we could wipe out the American Pacific Fleet in this next turn for Japan. Uh, meanwhile, for Germany, the... The Russians just continue to build a shit ton of infantry at Moscow. So um, we might launch an offensive from Karelia into Archangel. We can probably easily take Western Russia as well with our troops sprinting out of Poland. So we can probably take Western Russia and Archangel bringing us to border Moscow. Um, and then maybe retake the Caucasus. They don't have too strong of a force there. The German fleet, it looks like that was in the Mediterranean, did get destroyed. So I think the next step here is to leave this infantry in Egypt, move our tank back to Algeria, and then we should be good against the troops there. We probably want to move our submarines down here to try and destroy this American transport, which is the only transport they have in the Atlantic. It's the only real threat. So I think for Germany, what we need to do is we've lost a bunch of our air units. So let's go ahead and let's uh, build a bomber and two fighters. That's going to be the bulk of our spending this turn. Um, we'll also go ahead and build one more submarine. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to build a new tank and a new infantry. And that's going to be our spending this turn. Meanwhile, our combat move for Germany, there's going to be a bunch of them. Germany's going to be active this turn. So we're going to move all three of our subs here off the coast of uh, Spain and Portugal to try and knock out this American, is it a cruiser? It looks like a cruiser and a transport. It's the only American transport in the, uh, in the Atlantic. Um, we're then going to see about launching an offensive here against Archangel. Now the risk here is that we only have level one attacks and we need two hits. We're going to be attacking units that have two and three defenses. So maybe what we'll actually do is, can we fly one of our fighters over here? We'll send one fighter for support, mainly just because the infantry can absorb the casualties while the fighter does the bulk of the damage. Um, we're also going to counterattack in the Caucasus. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move forward all of the troops currently in Ukraine. So that's going to be three infantry and artillery. So that's going to be two units attacking at two, one unit attacking at three against two, three enemy units. So that's five versus three. And then I think what we'll also do is we're going to use this fighter here to attack Western Russia. And then we're going to use these two tanks to attack. Well, actually, let's just do the one tank. So one fighter, one tank attacking here. This infantry will also move into Belarus. I'm probably overextending myself, but I'm going to get to the gates of Moscow this turn. That's my that's my focus here. 
fully acknowledging that the enemy will almost certainly counterattack and drive us back, but I'm really hoping we can take Archangel, Western Russia, and the Caucasus. That'll be a serious blow, I'm hoping, to the Soviets there. There's no British naval forces, so there's no risk of a landing in France. We're destroying the only American unit in... Um, Actually, no, you can't do that. There's a, any artillery there in Transjordan. I need a transport for Germany. I didn't even think of that. I really do. Alright, we're going to try and knock out that British artillery unit in Transjordan. I think that's everything that Germany can attack with. Looks like it, so we'll zoom in here. And we'll go ahead and end the phase. So we'll move into the combat phase. First things first, let's resolve the Transjordan battle. There's a little bit of risk here. I mean, obviously they get a good hit against us. They could they could do some damage. I don't I really can't afford to lose any casualties here. I'm just gambling. Ooh, that was close. Just gambling that they won't get any twos or lower. We at least killed them for sure. Do they get a counterattack and succeed at all? Yes, they do. Fuck. So they knock out one of our infantry units there. We do not have enough troops in the Middle East or <laughs> Africa. Especially now that the Americans have landed in North Africa. And we have no way of reinforcing either because we have no transports there. Nonetheless, it's a, a temporary victory. And we take Transjordan. Um, next battle I think we're going to fight here. Let's do the naval battle, actually. So let's go against the cruiser and transport with our three subs. The funny thing is, even if we take it, there's no real... Why is there no enemy? Surprise strike! Attacking submarines roll now. Three dice rolls. Nothing. Just great. So the cruiser counterattacks and misses, so we'll continue to press the attack. We can submerge and get out of the battle anytime we want, but we're attacking for a reason. So we'll go ahead and roll. Nothing again. Come on, guys. Alright, so we lose one of our three subs. We really only need one hit, though. Alright, so we lose one unit. We're going to go ahead and press the attack. I don't know if, like, a surprise attack means that, like... It oh, nice. So we got two, we got a hit, so the enemy ships are sunk. And do they get to counterattack because it's a surprise attack? No, they don't. Alright, so that's actually a good result. Enemy loses much more. Cruiser is much more valuable than a sub, so they lose any of their sea lift capabilities there. And now onto the Russian front. Onto the Russian front. Alright, let's go attack at Archangel first. We'll see what happens here. Definitely overextending ourselves. Fully recognize that. Four infantry attack and they do nothing. How about our fighter? Do something. Nothing! Great. So we lose a hit there. We'll take it to the infantry. We'll probably lose two here, actually. Yeah, we will. Great. Alright, we'll continue the attack. Two infantry units get to attack. They do nothing. Give me a three or less. There we go. All right, so we knocked out one of their ground units. Defender first roll, nothing. Defender second roll does get a hit, so we'll take the hit to the infantry. God, fighters on defense are so deadly. Two to one now. Really need to hit him. Fuck! All right, at least he missed there. So attack again. Nothing. For fuck's sake. I can't take ground with a with a fighter, but I do want to try and knock this guy out. He's already successfully destroyed our attack. And we can't hit him. This is bullshit. The one American unit that survives and wipes out our attack on Archangel. Great. Ugh. Our first defeat, 22 to four. That was a disaster. Let's hope that's not uh, for. I hope that's not um, 
indicative of what we're going to see in our other attacks here. All right, two infantries versus... I mean, well, they've got two also. All right, so we got one hit in the first round. He hits nothing. So that's a good start. All right, so we win that battle. I'm just I just kind of zoomed through that. So at least we successfully attack Western Russia, that is now German. And then that'll actually shield the Caucasus from a direct counterattack, I think, as well. So if we win this battle, then they won't be able to get it right back. So we get the infantry rolling first. They do nothing. We get the infantry supported with artillery rolling, and they get one hit. So the enemy infantry there. And now we've got two armored units versus two enemy armored units. We, of course, hit them with nothing. At least their infantry doesn't help, and then they get one hit on our infantry with their tanks. So one-to-one -one in the first round in terms of casualties. We'll go ahead and press the attack. I expect nothing from my infantries where we need to roll snake eyes. But my uh, infantry supported by artillery continues to be effective there. They knock one enemy out. Hopefully this round can knock out what's left, and it can. So we have won the battle. It's just a matter of how many casualties we take. And we took nothing more. Okay, so that is a good result for us. I'm very happy with that. And the Caucasus falls to us for a second straight turn. So, we lose 34 IPCs. The enemy, on the other hand, loses 23... 48. So they lose more than us, but, uh, you know, with the initiative and all. Alright, so let's land these fighters. We can't land them in a newly conquered base, so we're actually going to land our fighters in Karelia, because... Hey, that's going to be a level 4 defensive, at least, against these enemy fighters. And 11. They can't take Leningrad with anything, I don't think, actually. I don't even think air units can take ground. So that's a good um, fact, I guess. We're going to move our artillery into Ukraine. We'll move our three infantry into Ukraine. Because it's more central, it can support either, Ca either the Caucasus or Western Russia. I fully expect a counterattack with massive Soviet infantry against Western Russia to succeed, for what it's worth. All right, we're going to move one infantry both to Germany and to Northwestern Europe. We'll also move one supporting artillery there, too. Just in the event the... I don't even know how they would. I'm probably reinforcing the West Wall to the Russian front's detriment. There's not really any reason to do that. They have no transports. They could build transports, but then I'd at least have a turn of warning. Can these guys move anywhere? No, they can't. We'll keep them in southern uh, in Italy. Let's move these guys to uh, Bulgaria and Romania. Bulgaria, Romania. All right. Um... Okay. I think these infantry are going to fall them back to Libya. I don't. I can't withstand an enemy attack toward Algeria, so at least fall back, give them Algeria free, and then I can race my armor back west from Libya. The British may pull some troops away from India toward Persia to defend against our armored unit moving up here through their rear. We might actually link up with the Caucasus formation over here, um, and really the Soviet Union's in some serious trouble. They have their capital, and that's the main thing, but they have basically just infantry left. They really need allied support. The British could fly some fighters over there to help. That would make things really difficult. But, um, yeah. So that's the situation there. And let's go ahead and deploy our troops. So what did we all buy again? We bought some fighters. We bought some armor. Let's move the armor into Poland. Let's move the infantry into Poland. Move this uh, submarine unit here off the coast of France. Meanwhile, our two new fighters will deploy one to Le Karelia. Actually, let's uh, undo that infantry here. Let's move it to Karelia too, and then we'll move one of these infantry or one of these fighters to Poland, and we'll move the bombers to Germany. So that's going to do it for our phase. We'll go ahead and end the turn. I think we're just going to see what the British do. Failed invasion at Archangel. Okay. So the British are attacking our subs here. It looks... Or they... Did they not attack our subs? Looks like they bought some... The British bought a navy. So they bought two destroyers and a cruiser. 
off the coast of England. Um, I could use my bombers against them too. Might be nice to ensure we continue to destroy the enemy surface vessels. Um, I think that's about it. They didn't attack anywhere. There were no battles for the British. They did move some troops maybe? Or did they? Did they move any fighters anywhere? Uh, they left all the troops they have in India where they are. They did move one infantry unit up toward Anglo-Sudan. Toward Egypt. And that was it. The British are really impotent at this point in the game. Um, I am actually going to go ahead and... Can I, does it just auto-save? I don't really know how that works. Okay, so I'm going to trust that it's going to save after each country goes. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think it's... Yes, it does, because the Russians went last time. We've been going for about 40 minutes, guys. Let me know if you're enjoying this. This is Classic Axis and Allies, 1942, on Steam, currently in Early Access, by Beamdog. This was our second episode on the game. You know, it feels like Axis and Allies. There's a bit of frustration, a bit of luck at times. Um... I think it could be fun to play against a, a human opponent, and I'm considering doing that against uh, Tortuga and maybe Jean as one of our um, single malt strategy, like just almost like a single malt strategy stream, just for fun to see how that plays out. Um, so I'm considering that, but we'll see how things play out going forward. Let me know if this is well received. I'll continue to play it. If not, then we may just stop here. Um, but in any event, I hope you guys are enjoying the series, and I'm going to go ahead and sign out here. So until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.